Hello and a very good evening to you in Singapore from London. My name is Razia Iqbal and I'm the Chair of Judges this year for the Man Asian Literary Prize and it has been my pleasure and privilege to be the Chair of Judges. We have read, along with my fellow judges Vikas Swarup and Chang Rae Lee, some pretty extraordinary books. It's remarkable to see Asia presenting itself to itself, from countries as diverse as Iran to Japan. I'm sorry not to be with you in Singapore this evening, but but my fellow judge, Vikas Swarup, will be presenting our long list to you. Thanks very much. Without any further ado, this is the 2011 Man Asian Literary Prize Long List. I will read out the name of the author, followed by the title, followed by the country, followed by the publisher. Jameel Ahmed, The Wandering Falcon, Pakistan, Hamish Hamilton. Tehmima Anna, The Good Muslim, Bangladesh, Hamish Hamilton. Jahanavi Barua, Rebirth, India, Penguin. Rahul Bhattacharya, the Sly Company of People Who Care, India, Picador. Mahmood Dawlatabadi, The Colonel, Iran, House Publishing. Amitabh Ghosh, River of Smoke, India, John Murray and Hamish Hamilton. Haruki Murakami, 1Q84, Japan, Harville Sector. Anuradha Roy, The Folded Earth, India, Meglahos Press and Hashet. Kion Suk Shin, Please Look After Mom, South Korea, Alfred A. North. Tarun Jeet Tejpal, the Valley of Masks, India, Fourth Estate. Yang Liang, Dream of Ding Village, China, Grove Atlantic. Banana Yoshimoto, The Lake, Japan, Mendel House. That completes our list of 12 titles for the 2011 Man Asian Literary Prize longest. Okay, we now have time for question and answer. Initially, with uh, any journalists in the room, um, if you could give your full name and publication before ask, answer your question. There are no questions from journalists. I cannot talk. No. <laughs> I'm also a journalist. <laughs> could, you, could you explain the process? Because one of the things which, which authors usually wonder about is, if there were 60 titles or 70 titles, and there, there were five judges, how did they read all of them? Do all of them read all the titles, which is hard to believe, or are they just distributed? No, I think uh, we were very, very clear about what we wanted to do, and we you know we were pakka judges. We we followed the protocol, which is you have to read the books that are sent to you, and then of course we have to arrive at a consensus. In the case of the Mandishian literature. Uh, Literary Prize, we had three judges. Uh, myself, Razia Iqbal, was the chair, and Chang Rae Lee, uh, who's based in US, uh, South Korean writer. And we read the books. Uh, I mean, it's difficult, of course, when you have to judge 90 books. So, you know, some books you come at a conclusion very early on, and some books, uh, you know, uh, you know a bit late whether or not uh, this book is going to make it or not. And then basically we exchanged emails. It was a trans uh, Atlantic. Uh, <laughs> It was a cross-continent kind of an interaction because Razia was based in UK, I live in Japan, and Chang Rae Lee is based in the United States. And then the idea really of the judging is to arrive at a consensus where all the judges agree on the titles which have to be featured in the longest, 
and I'm very happy to say it was a very painless, uh, it was a very collaborative, a very exciting uh, way of, uh, you know, of judging. We were all, I think, this 12, this list of 12 that we have presented today is a list in which all three of us agree. I think it all depends on what the humor is in service of. Uh, eventually, since the very title of this prize is the Man Asian Literary Prize, you are looking for literary merit. But literary merit does not mean that you just have words. The words have to be in service of something. Uh, a service of a plot, a service of characters, relationships, whatever. And it all depends how humor is used. So, if obviously a book is submitted which is purely a comedy, you know, which is, you know, which does not have literary merit, then I don't think that that book would make it to the Man Asian Literary uh, Prize long list or, or short list. But if uh, uh, a book may be called Serious Men, but may have, uh, you know, humor, which is in service. Uh, a character uh, itself uh, may have, you know, uh, certain takes or whatever, you know, which make him humorous or which create humorous situations. Uh, I don't think, I mean, the judges would look at it as scans or, or consider that, you know, that is not something that we can consider. So I think eventually, you know, a book is a very, you know, it's a package, you know, it's a package with so many elements. And humor could be one of the elements. I mean, faith house could be one of the elements. Uh, you know, tragedy, comedy, everything is part of uh, you know what we face in daily life. And eventually, books are a reflection of life, aren't they? Obviously, you don't have to be a journalist. Any further questions from anyone in the audience? Since all three judges come from different cultures, um, do they do they really judge it? I don't think so. I mean, obviously, you know, as an Indian, when I'm reading a book about India, I would be able to relate to it more in the sense, I mean, that's not, uh, that's uh, normal and natural. Uh, Chang Rae Lee, who's from South Korea, would be able to relate to a Korean novel better than Janai, for instance. But that does not mean, in fact, I think the whole purpose of this Man Asian Literary Prize is to expose Asian writing in general. And I think the fact that we were able to read novels, you know, from countries as diverse as Iran and, and Japan, means that, you know, they have been able to see what, what the current crop of Asian writers is doing, what they are creating, what kind of stories are coming out of Asia. Because I think uh, it's a very exciting phase in Asia now. I mean, everybody talks about uh, the 21st century belonging to Asia. And now we are seeing Asia stake its claim also to, you know, 21st century literature belonging to Asia. And I think that was the exciting phase. And I think that was the charm also of reading uh, these books, uh, some of which I would not have read, uh, you know, in my normal life. But as a judge, you know, you have to read these books and you get exposed to what's happening in diverse countries. Further questions from the audience, please. Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask about the, um, the elephant in the room, in a way, which is <coughs> translation. Um, and you, you presented a, a, a broad spectrum of, of works um, from the long list. Um, and some of those works were originally written in English. Um, some of them are available translation. Uh, you said you tried to focus on the essential literary merit of each work, but um, in the end, literature is about language. So how do you separate literary merit from language and um, there what difficulties of that And also, um, you presented these works, <coughs> but in the case of the translated works, you haven't mentioned um, the translated names. So what do you think that the acknowledgement should be given to the I think it's a valid point that you're making. Uh, after all, I mean, Asia is a very diverse continent and there are diverse countries and, you know, each country has its own language, its own traditions and writers write in their own national languages. And the literature that comes to us in English is actually mediated by the translator. But I think the quality of a good translation is that the work should not feel translated. That we should feel as if, you know, we are getting that reality firsthand from the writer without the translator intervening. And I think that's the hallmark of a great translator, that the work should not feel translated. And I can vouch for the 12 titles on our long list that, I mean, the translators, because Haruki Murakami, we read in translation, uh, we read uh, 
the writer from Iran in translation, uh, we read uh, the writer from South Korea in translation, we read Banana Yoshimoto in translation. They did not, uh, they spoke to us as if we were hearing the writer today. I should say that the prize does recognize yes. translators, of course, financially, if nothing else, but gives them recognition. Yes. So, any further questions from the audience? Perhaps I can ask one question, which is that you read so many works from so many different cultures so quickly, um, which, as you say, is not something that most people do in normal life. Um, so you perhaps can see something of any emerging trends. Is there such a thing as Asian fiction? Is it coalescing in any way into anything that you could identify as? Uh, I think this is a question that we have grappled with as judges also, that you know, having read such a broad spectrum of writing from such a broad spectrum of countries, uh, could, we, could we pinpoint something which we, call, which we could call Asian fiction in general? And I think the jury is still out because, uh, as I said, every country has its own cultural traditions. But I think uh, that Asia itself is very, you know, has a very old tradition of storytelling. Uh, and secondly, I believe Asian writers, you know, uh, for them, the story uh, acquires a lot of importance as opposed to form and structure, you know, which, uh, which uh, might be more important for some writers from the West. And secondly, Asia has gone through so much. You know, most Asian countries have had the history of colonialism. And then, of course, after that, I mean, we had war, we had revolution, we have had independence. Uh, now we are coping with the tradition and modernity debate, you know, how we are modernizing while also being anchored to traditions, how we are belonging to home and to the world, the whole wave of globalization, economic globalization. So this, I think, provides a great fund, a purpose from which Asian writers can weave the stories uh, that, that they tell. And I think this is what links Asia. The fact that we all have, in a way, in a sense, this shared heritage, you know, either it is foreign domination or colonialism, now of course post-colonialism, economic liberalization and globalization. In a sense, they link us and yet every writer is free to choose his or her own theme. So we have stories here, you know, which you can call epics, you know, historical epics set in, set in China or, you know, set in a fictional Japan. And also you had stories about very simple family relationships. Uh, the relationship between a mother and a son, the relationship between a father uh, and a son, or between a husband and a wife. So you have all kinds of things, and I think Asia stands, I think, for family values as well. So that is an another theme, which I think is very central to writing and coming out of Asia. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we have time for possibly one more question. I have, oh, sorry, at the back. Right, uh, just looking at the long list, um, just looking at the long list this year, is there anything that well, look, I mean, Asia is composed of, uh, you know, many, many countries, so obviously in a list of 12, you cannot represent every Asian country, and, and that's not the aim of this prize. The aim of this prize is really to recognize the best fiction coming out of Asia. Uh, for instance, we see a preponderance of writers from India. Um, that's because of the 90 books, uh, vast majority were submitted by Indian writers. So that is not something that we can help. But I think what is important is we have to create the culture of translation. Because so many great books, even out of India, because don't forget, I mean, apart from English and, and Hindi, we have so many other languages. Uh, these books don't get translated. And because they don't get translated into English, you know, they are not able to reach a wider audience. So certainly, I'm sure, uh, all members of the Man Asian Literary Prize would like to see many more countries represented, especially the smaller countries, the countries whose stories we don't really get to hear because, you know, either these stories have not been translated or the writers are literally obscure and we have not heard of them, but their voices need to be heard. And I'm sure, as Bife, you said, as the Man Asian Literary Prize grows, grows, in, uh, grows in strength, we are going to get these voices out. And because this prize also recognizes the art of translation, perhaps this will encourage uh, more translators to translate fiction and get these voices out to the vast majority of, of people out there. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm sure some of you will have other, other questions that you might want to ask people in the reception afterwards, uh, but it remains for me to thank our judge and our authors. So if you'll join me. And thank you.